Hey everybody, welcome to the third video in the series of using the tools on Polypad to find factors of numbers. Uh, this is the ending of the second video where we took the 180 prime factor circle and pulled it apart to create factor pairs that multiply to 180. In the first video, we looked at creating rectangular arrays of 180 number tiles to show all the factors of 180. And in this video, uh, let me clear this here. I don't want to download it. In this video, we are going to start with the factor circle for uh, the prime factor circle for 180 and uh, try to build factors from it. So what I would do with students is I would take 180 and pull apart its prime factors. So we know it's a two, a two, a three, A three and a five. And I might ask students to build factors of this. So I might do this uh, as a whole class and I might ask for a student volunteer and ask them how many twos they want to use in building their, their factor of 180. Now let's say the student says they want to use one of them. So all right, I'll pull down one two. And then I might ask them how many threes do you want to use? And maybe they want to use both of the threes. So I'll pull those down. And I might say, how many fives do you want to use? And they might say, none. So I'd say, all right, let's look at the factor that we've made. Ah, we just made the factor 18. I might do this again and ask a student, how many twos do you want to use? They might say, none. And I might, and then how many threes do you want to use? Let's say they say both threes. And then how many fives do you want to use? And they would say, one five. So this is the factor they've built. And there's 45. So after doing two as a class, I would send them off and have them go through this process to try to find all the factors of 180. And again, I've, I've used the same number in all three of these videos. If, if this is pretty close to the other lessons that you've done, maybe consider doing a different number so the factor pairs aren't fresh in their, in their mind. Um, but students would go off and do this, try to find all the factors of 180 by creating combinations of the factors. And then when they've had some time to do that, I would come together as a class and show them how um, I'm going to use a, a tree diagram to represent all the factors. So uh, before we've built any factor, right, we've, we've started at the number one. If you don't choose any of them, we have the factor one. That, that came up in the, in, in the second video when we needed the number to go with 180. And so now I would talk to students about what choices did we have for the twos. And students saw that sometimes we didn't use any twos, sometimes we used one two, and sometimes we used both of the twos. And I would show this here by saying, all right, let's take one of the twos and put it here, and let's take both of the twos and put it over here. All right? So this branch represents using two of the twos, this branch represents using one of the twos, and I'd ask them, what do you think should go over here if we don't use any of the twos, what factor is that? And hopefully they'll uh, be able to show that that's the factor of one. All right, so we have a branch for the twos, then I would say, all right, let's talk about using the threes now. What choices do we have for using the threes? I would zoom out a little bit. And it's the same idea. We could not use any threes. We could use one three, or we could use both threes. So each of these would have three branches going down. And again, I'm doing this as a class, engaging the students in, in questions here. You could decide whether you want them to make their own canvas as you're doing this. Uh, I might start with, all right, the middle branch is using one of the three. So we could use one three, one three, and one three. Sometimes we used both threes. So this would be both threes, both threes, and both threes. And again, if we don't use a three, that's like having the factor of one here. So this one would go on the first branch. I might stop here and ask students what each branch might represent. So I would say, okay, let's go down this branch. What factor have we made? Well, it's two, three, three. So that's the factor 18. I could, if I wanted to, I could take all these and copy them and show what happens when I put them together two, three, and three, there's 18. So this branch represents the factor 18. 
and then maybe do this with a couple of the other branches. What's this branch? There's nine. What's this branch? And so on. But we haven't, haven't included the fives into our tree, the, the prime factor of five. So uh, we could either use a five or not. And so I'd have a conversation with students about how many choices that is. And it's either using a five or not using the five. So each of these will have two off of it, the one and the five. And what I'm hoping to have students see as I do this is, right, there's the, uh, the total number of factors that a number can have is certainly connected to the number of each of the prime factors, right? So uh, I'm not going to formalize that idea with students at this point, um, but I want them to see how the tree can represent what all the factors are. So all of these have a 5 in the second branch. So I'm putting the 5 as, as the choosing one of the 5, and if we don't choose the 5, it's the 1. So let me grab a 1 here and copy it down. And then what I would do is ask students to maybe pick one of the branches and find what factor that is. So if students are doing this on a canvas with me at the same time, they could choose a branch to do. Maybe I could assign a branch to individual students. Um, but let's take this branch, for example, right? If we want to find out what factor that is, I could it's a 2, 2, 1, and a 5. I could take all these and holding down shift while I click on them and copy them and maybe give myself some more room to combine all these and say, all right, that was a 2, 2, that was the factor 20. So I could go over here and put the 20 as the ending of that branch if I wanted to, right? And maybe I would draw a line in a different color to show that this gave us 20, right? I might make a connection that this branch is one. I'm not choosing any of them. That came up in, in the second video when we don't choose any of the factors. It's one. And this branch is choosing all of them. And we saw when we chose all of them, we got 180. Right? But I'd have students go through and find all the factors. We'd count and see that there's 18 factors and try to build that idea that for the twos, we had three choices. For the threes, we had three choices, and for the five, we had one choice, and that's why we ended up with 18 branches in the tree. So I would stop here as a class and then have students go do a number of these on their own. They could maybe choose from a, a range of numbers that I've given them. They could make their own number, right? They could go to the prime factor circles, and they could do any number they want. Maybe they want to do 200, and they could drag 200 onto their canvas and pull it apart into its prime factors and make the tree and find how many factors 200 has. And depending on how far you want to go with this, you could eventually get to the formalization of the idea of, of how you look at the number of each prime factors to get the number of factors. Or maybe you're, you're okay with them just playing around with it, building a couple trees, and uh, using the trees to find all the factors of a number. But I think being able to see the prime factors as these things that you can move around into the tree is a really great concrete representation of all the different choices that you can make to create factors of a number. All right. So thanks for watching. I hope this gave you some ideas of how you could use this in your class with students. Lots of ways to use these tools to think about factors of numbers. We did number tiles, uh, and then we did two ways with the prime factor circles. Please share other ideas that uh, you have about how to use these in, in your classroom. Thanks for watching.